All right, in this tutorial, we're gonna go over how to handle some survey data. And specifically, we'll focus on the question type where the participants could enter multiple responses for a single question. You see this commonly with the select all that apply questions that are, that are often used in surveys. Um, but here, we're gonna look at an interesting example where I've allowed users to enter in um, their favorite hobbies. And then I've linked that question to the amount of time spent on hobbies. So this becomes complicated because we not only have multiple answers in one cell for one question, but that question is linked to another question that also has multiple answers that have a specific order related to the previous question. So you might be at a loss when you first look at this for how to analyze it, but I'm gonna show you how to clean it and analyze it with pivot tables. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get these comma separated answers into their own tables. If you're using uh, survey platforms like Qualtrics, this is actually can be done before you export your data, but if you're using something like Google Sheets, um, the default is this. Um, and what you're gonna to wanna to do is just make space for the entries to be spilled into new columns. So I'm just gonna insert some columns here. Um, since I know um, the maximum number of entries was, uh, which is four, I just entered in three more columns to spill into. But if you didn't know that, I would recommend using the length function so you can get the length of this text. Um, and essentially what you're doing is counting the number of commas and then adding one, uh, just because you know um, you have one more entry than commas. So you use length to get the length and then you use length and substitute. to get uh, remove the number of column, uh, commas in there so that the difference in the length of the original text versus the length without commas will give you the number of commas. So that gives you two and then add one because you always have another word um, compared to the number of commas. And double click to fill that down and get the difference. And the max is four. But anyways, um, back to filling those out into the columns. This is relatively easy. Highlight your text, go to data, text to columns, delimited. And you're gonna go by comma. It previews the data for you here. So that looks good. And press next and finish. Repeat the same process with the time spent on hobbies. Insert, or sorry, data, text to columns, delimited by comma. Those look good, finish. So now the spacing is a little weird. So I'm just going to come up here, click on the upper leftmost corner, go to where you normally resize your columns, and double click there. And it's resized it all uh, here for me. I didn't bother filling in the column headers here because we're just going to actually do something called stacking your data. So I'm going to take this array um, and stack it into one column. And this is going to help us set up for uh, pivot tables. So I'm just going to rearrange some of my column headers here um, just so. It's all ready. And we're gonna start stacking. So the easiest way to do this is to use the to call function, which just takes an array and converts it into a singular column. So we have an 18 by four array. So it's gonna put this into 72 rows. And then you can repeat the thing, same thing with the time spent on hobbies array. Now, since we're getting this ready for pivot tables, I recommend you cleaning up this text. So you can see some of this text has a weird space in front of words, and then the capitalization uh, is not the same across every entry. And there are a couple of ways you can fix the capitalization. There are several functions like upper, lower, and proper. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the proper case and just show you that uh, what it does. Uh, it essentially will capitalize the first letter of each word. Um, and just to highlight where it's done that with TV, um, that uh, second letter, which was originally capitalized is now not capitalized, which is fine for this context. What I'm really worried about is getting consistent capitalization. So it'll recognize running with a capital R as the same as running with a lowercase r. And then the last thing I wanna do is something called trim, which removes some of those weird white spaces. So watch reading and painting as I enter this in you see those spaces go away. Now to give you a better feel of what two columns did, 
uh, take a look at the first three rows, cooking, reading, painting, and let's go over to our original array. So um, if we go here, we can see that cooking, reading, painting, which is now uh, the first three rows, was the entries for Susie, and 1225 is now brought over here as well. So that all looks good. So now you might be wondering how we're gonna carry over the information of name, gender, and age. And what we're gonna use is the lookup. So I'm gonna insert some helper columns here just to um, help with cleaning up the data. And what these helper columns are going to do is give me a lookup value and help me find it in the lookup array. So the lookup value is actually gonna be really simple. It's just gonna be the index. So a value between one and 72, which was the number of rows in our new array. So that corresponds to 18, which is the number of respondents and four, which was the maximum number of entries uh, per respondent. So there are our lookup values. Now we can come over here and define the helper values. And the way you can think through this is that you want one through four to go to Susie, five through nine to go to Kelly, or five through eight to go through Kelly. And we need to define those ranges here. Um, and what VLOOKUP does, we'll look at the bottom bound of those ranges. So Susie's bottom bound is one because she's the first person, but Kelly's would then be Susie's entry plus the maximum number of entries, which was four. And then we can double click to drag that down. Um, and now we're all set to use VLOOKUP. So now we can come here and type in VLOOKUP. The first value is our lookup or the lookup value, which is here. Then we wanna highlight our array that we're looking up. So I'm gonna highlight all the way to age and this is just gonna speed up some of the um, filling out of other information. And then the column that we wanna fill in. So we're interested in name, so that's the second column. Um, and before I go, uh, let's lock these arrays so I can drag it. And then I'm gonna do a column lock for the lookup value. So there we go, there's Susie. Double click to fill, it, uh, fill out the formula down and we have the pattern that we wanted. Now let's drag this over to fill out the rest of the stuff. And all we need to update is that reference column. So this is going to be three for gender and four for age. And there we go. Now we have all our data filled out nicely. And the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is handle these blanks um, so we don't have to see them or worry about them when we're making our pivot table. So select that data with control shift down. Let's make another tab called cleaned data. And let's paste that data. So that looks good. Um, before I deselect all the data, let's go to our go to window, uh, which is F5. Go to special and blanks. And we want it to highlight all these blanks for us so we can remove them. Press OK. And you can see that they're grayed out. So now you can right click, delete entire row. Sometimes this doesn't always work um, because blank cells aren't actually blank in Excel. Uh, and this happens when you're cleaning your data and sometimes there's just weird things hanging out. Um, if that happens, what I recommend you do is you go to your data, um, make it into a table, and then just apply a filter. So I've often found that when that happens with the go-to, it still will give me an option to select blanks when I converted this into a table. And then you can just delete those rows and remove the filter. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and name this table, um, clean data. Um, and this is all ready to analyze in a pivot table. Let's go ahead and insert our pivot table, go to insert pivot table. It's already got my table name in there and then we're gonna do it into a new worksheet. If you haven't seen a pivot table before, um, they're really simple. So let's pull over the column headers from our table. And now we can drag those into these different fields to analyze the data. So for example, if we wanted to know what the counts were for each hobby, we can drop hobbies into the rows and you get a unique list of hobbies from all the hobbies that were entered. And then you could drag name to values to get the counts. And if we wanted to quickly visualize this, we could even, uh, go highlight the whole data, go to home, conditional formatting, and let's do color scales and have red be high values and blue be low values. So there you go. Now you can see that reading and running, uh, singing and drawing are common 
hobbies. Now say you didn't really want the count, um, you could ask other questions. Maybe you wanna know how long everybody spends. So let's put time to hobbies. And this is some of the hobbies, some of the time spent on the hobbies. You could change this to be an average. So it looks like on average, people spend the most time uh, reading, walking, weightlifting, go back to the condition formatting. And there you go, you can quickly visualize that information. Now it's nice because we can update this to break down by other variables. So say we wanna break down by gender. Now we easily get that added into our table. And let's say we wanna get rid of the grand totals. You could go to design, offer rows and columns just because it's looking a little cluttered. And there we go. We have a breakdown of hobbies between male and female, and we're looking at the average amount of time spent on that hobby. And this would be really tedious to do when using formulas. However, one drawback now with this data is if you wanted to go in and ask something simple like, what is the breakdown of gender? And you drag your name into the values, you're getting 18 and 23. And now you know that's incorrect because we had discussed that we had 18 respondents. There are a couple of ways you could go about it. What I would recommend you do is just go back and use formulas to calculate the breakdown of male, female. And I can show you how to do that in a later video. Another option, and I honestly don't really like this, is to use pivot tables to generate that information, but then you have to do one more step to really get it where you want it to go. Um, and how you would do this is uh, you could drag maybe gender to columns, and then you have name in both the rows and the values. So hold on to command, pull name down here so you can get it in two arrays. And now you can see the breakdown of gender by name and that people have gender listed twice. Um, you could use that as the basis of what you wanna do and then reference each column or each cell you wanna compare. So say we want um, the first one to test whether or not someone was male or female. So let's do one if they're female, zero if they're male. Uh, double click to drag that down and you can pull this across and double click. So you can see that's the opposite. So female, male, and then you can just sum these. So Command Shift T or Alt equals in Windows to sum those automatically. So now we have a total of 18. So seven plus 11 is 18, seven female, 11 male. One kind of nuance to this, you noticed I probably didn't click on this cell when I did the formula. It automatically locks it and it just makes it a little harder to drag your formulas down. Um, so that's just something to be aware of when you're working on this. Um, let's get out of this window. The last thing I wanna leave you with is that you could group people by hobbies. So say you wanted to combine lifting weights and weightlifting, you can select both of those and then right click and group. And then since this is now hard to read, you can just collapse all these fields and then you can go and see what the new variable is and we're just gonna call it lifting. And you can still get that breakdown um, when you click on expand the uh, field, but otherwise now it's combined together. And you could do this with a whole bunch of things. So say you wanted to combine everything that wasn't a physical activity. versus your physical activities. And then you can have kind of a less granular view of your data. So you can always go back and look at what the details are, um, but you also get this view really easily. So that's how to analyze your data when you have multi-answer questions and how to handle it, especially when you have multi-answer questions that are linked, like giving the hobby and the amount of time spent on each hobby. In future 
stuff or future tutorials will go how, how to use formulas. And this will show you how to analyze things like the gender and the age columns if you didn't necessarily have those in combination with these complex question types. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching.